seated if you can be tonight. You don't have to, but if you can be. Praise God. I just believe, I just believe some, some people that's going to get some good reports from, from being in service tonight. I think Amy's going to be one of them. She goes tomorrow for an endoscopy in Greenville tomorrow. I believe she's going to get a good report. Amen. Amen. Do y'all believe that tonight? I believe Karen's going to get a good report. I, I believe in, you know, I really believe, here's my prayer. Lord, I want you to see you do today what you did in the book of Acts. Amen. And if he did it in the book of Acts, he can do it today. Amen? Amen. And I'm thankful for that tonight. So thankful. So good to see everybody tonight. Thank you for being here. And uh, let's, uh, can we just thank these musicians and Mike and the sound guys and all these guys to help us out on here tonight. <laughs> Praise team, Amy and her team tonight. Thank God for all of them tonight and what they do. And thank you, Mary, for all you do tonight. Amen. I got a few announcements to make tonight. Um, God is really good. God is blessing. We're getting ready to have another water baptism. Somebody say praise the Lord. Isn't that good? I told you at the beginning of the year I wanted to wear that baptistry out. We're well on our way in doing it. Amen. Uh, Crystal's going to be baptized. Amen. We're excited about that. Can we celebrate that tonight and thank God for people that want to just, just make that public confession of Jesus Christ. I want the whole world to know that I'm a child of God. Amen. See, the baptism is an is a, is a, is a open confession of an inward work of grace that's happening in your heart. And I want the whole world to know that. Amen. Not ashamed to let everybody know. And I'm so excited about it. If you want to be baptized, see me. There'll be a sign-up sheet uh, on, at the Welcome Center. You can sign up, and we'll get you on the list. And we'll, as, soon as, we get, uh, as soon as we get back from revival, a few weeks after that, we'll go ahead and have a water baptism service. So I'm excited about that. Also, I've, I've got another announcement tonight. Uh, I don't, most of you know in our church family, but a lot of you don't know maybe, uh, Connie Smithson, she's a, she's a great writer. She's, really, she's a great author. And she's wrote a couple of books. And she's wrote another one now. She said the Holy Spirit really got a hold of her life and told her that she needs to share this book. And I'm going to give you the title of it tonight. If you'd like to get a copy of it, uh, it would, you would be blessed to read it. But this is the name of the title, Silent Cry with the Church, Overcoming Domestic Violence in a Christian Home. Or if you just, you know of anybody de dealing with domestic violence, don't have to be in a Christian home, just any kind of domestic violence, uh, this book would be for you and encourage you to see Connie tonight and maybe get your copy. It's named Silent Cry with the Church, Overcoming Domestic Violence in Christian Homes. And for those of you who don't know who Connie is, she's on the back pew on my left and on your right. And she's sitting right there. Amy just pointed at her tonight. So, so see her and, and grab that book. I believe you'll be blessed by it. Amen. And, and, and she didn't ask me to do that tonight. I asked her, could I do it, didn't I, Connie? I asked you, could I ask you to share this book tonight because I feel like it'll bless somebody. And, you know, these are things that a lot of people hide. They don't want nobody to know what they've been through. And, and this would be good for you to read. And I'm sure some of their stories are in that. Uh, this coming Sunday, uh, I'll start revival at Roanoke Rapids. At, um, and here, yeah, that's what I was looking for, the announcement. Let's start with this first. Rose, Sister Rose Boyd. They put here retired missionary. She is not retired. She is everywhere. Amen. Amen. She is all over the place. She's in Ecuador. She's here. She's Africa, everywhere. And she's still traveling. And, but uh, she's going to be speaking for us this coming Sunday morning. And I know you'll be blessed by Rose Boyd and her ministry. Can we thank God for that tonight? She's going to be with us Sunday. All right, let's give her a hand and get ready. Amen. I'm, I always look for the reports after Sunday service, how great it's going to be. I already believe it is. And then this coming Wednesday night, I mean the 19th, Sunday is the, nope, yep, Sunday is the 16th. And on the 19th and Wednesday night after that, Kurt's going to bring a, a devotional, a little message here or whatever the Lord lays on his heart here in the sanctuary. So we've got a lot of good things going on and be a part of all that. Don't miss none of it. Amen. And then I got one more announcement. If anybody wants now, I, I, if anybody wants to go to, come to revival one night, I'm not expecting you to because it's a long ways. But if you want to, I've got the address to to where the church is at here, and these on these little pieces of paper here, and I'll read it to you. But I'll give you one tonight if you want one. It's Harvest Temple PH Church. It's on 2357 West 10th Street in Roanoke Rapids, North Carolina. So if you want to go, if you think about, it, you might be able to come one night. Uh, I'd love to see you. The services start Sunday night at 6 o'clock. 
And then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the services start at 7. So uh, if you can, come on up with us to Roanoke Rapids, and uh, we're just going to have a revival. Amen. All right, are you ready for the Word tonight? All right, let's get right into it. We've been talking on, on Wednesday night for several Wednesday nights, and this is probably going to be the last, or at least I think it may be the last, on our study on life in the Spirit. So tonight, I want us to kind of really dig in tonight. I want to, I want to talk, we've talked about that the Holy Spirit is a multitasker, meaning that He does everything. He does a lot of things, and He does all things well. Uh, he does a lot. He comforts us. He leads us. He guides us. He, he's, he's, he's always there with us and for us. So we talked about several of the things thus far that the Holy Spirit does. He, he has many roles. He does many things. He is the third person of the triune Godhead. And when Jesus went up to heaven, he prayed the Father that he would send us another comforter. And when he prayed, the prayer touched the throne. And, and the Father sent the gift of the Holy Spirit back to you and I. How many of you are thankful for the Holy Spirit tonight? Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, say, don't leave home without him. Amen. And thank God you don't have to leave home without him. He'll be with you. He said, I'll send you another comforter and he shall abide with you forever. Isn't that good news? And I'm, we've been talking about that now on Wednesday night. Tonight we're going to kind of wrap it up tonight. And we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit clothes us. Uh, uh, and, and I'm going I'm to really get into this tonight because I don't know about you, but I don't even want to go to Walmart without the Holy Spirit. Do you? I don't want to go nowhere without Him. I need Him. How many of you need the Holy Spirit tonight? You know, we used to preach and teach a lot in churches about uh, we, you need to get saved. Sa I, and I, I just enjoyed saying saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost tonight. I haven't said that in a while. But I still believe this. I, I got, I've got to hurry up. I feel this thing hit me so hard. I'm so glad for sanctification. I'm so glad for the Holy Spirit tonight. And we're going to talk about tonight how He clothes us. How, how, and that means he endues us with power from on high. And I'm grateful for the power of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us tonight. So we're going to talk about being clothed from on high. The Holy Spirit clothed us. And if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 49 through 53. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 49 through 53. Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, 49 through 53. And behold, I send you the promise of my Father unto you. Jesus is saying, I'm going to send the promise of my Father unto you. Jesus is getting ready to be ascended and go back to the Father. And his last prayer was, right, right, his very last prayer was, I, I, Behold, I send the promise of the Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That word endued can be translated clothed with power. Clothed with power. How many of you want to be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit? We live in a wicked, evil world. This world, somebody said, I told Cynthia tonight, we need a Pentecostal, Holy Ghost, fire baptized, revival. I believe more than any other time since I've been a Christian. Because I'm here to tell you tonight, we're living in a world that needs God. And we need men and women, boys and girls to be clothed with the Holy Spirit. That we may carry this good news gospel message to a lost and dying world. And on the day of Pentecost, your Bible says that on that day you shall be baptized in the Holy Ghost and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. How many of you want Holy Ghost power to be a witness for Jesus tonight? Oh, hallelujah. So y'all help me tonight. I'm trying to teach and I feel the preach. Let's, let's read a little bit more tonight. Let's read it all. Let's start off. I'm going to read it this time, then I'm going to stop, all right? And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you, but tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. He's getting ready to leave them. He's getting ready to be ascended back to the Father. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up 
into heaven. Wouldn't you like to have seen that? Wouldn't that have been a beautiful sight? And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Hide me behind the cross tonight. Let me break the bread of life under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let me just teach, Lord, what you would have me to say tonight. And all that's done, I'll be careful to give you the praise. For I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. To kind of set the foundation and, and where we're talking from tonight, in Luke chapter 24, beginning with verse 48, 47, 49, to the end of the chapter, Jesus now is getting ready to go back to heaven. He is getting ready to be ascended back to heaven. And as he got ready to go up and right before their eyes, your Bible says that he blessed them. How many of you know there's a difference between a blessing and prayer? A prayer is what you pray. A blessing is what somebody gives. You. How many of you are glad that Jesus gives you the blessing tonight? And the gift of the Holy Spirit is a blessing tonight. And the last thing that Jesus did prior to him going back to, to the Father's right hand, he said, I pray the Father, and when I pray to the Father, he shall send you the, the Holy Spirit. And that's what he is saying now. He is leaving. He's going back to heaven. But thank God he didn't leave you and I orphans. Are you glad of that? Thank God did he not leave us alone in this world. He said, I'm going to send you somebody. He, and he said, I'm not going to send you a force. I'm I'm not going to send you something that would just help you out. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And he will be with you to lead you, to guide you, to comfort you, to strengthen you, to be with you while you go in this world and while you witness for me. I'm telling you right now, we can't do anything without the Holy Spirit. At least we can't do anything effectively without the Holy Spirit. And I really do believe it. I believe it was a... A preacher that I read behind not too long ago, and, and he said these words right here. He said that we're living in a modern church age now that, that think they can do it because they've got good at having church. I'm not talking about having church. I'm talking about having the power of the Holy Spirit to help us win the loss. And that is a great need in this world right now. How many believe Jesus is soon coming? He is coming soon, ladies and gentlemen, and we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is getting ready to go back to heaven. He has blessed his disciples and his followers, and he says, go to Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And when he's used that word endued, it has about three or four definitions, and I'm going to give you some of them tonight. To be endued, what that word really means is to, when you think about it, it means to put on. Not only does it mean to put on, it means to sink into or to saturate. Does anybody want to be saturated in the Spirit tonight? Oh, we used to call that being drunk in the Spirit. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Somebody said, well, I don't know about all that stuff. I do. Been there and done that. Can I get a witness? Somebody said, I don't know about all that, all that being drunk in the Spirit. Listen, if you drink what I'm drinking right now, you might get drunk in the Spirit tonight because I'm sipping on some new wine. I was going to teach, but I feel the preach. I'm sipping on some new wine right now. And you can take that other stuff and throw in the trash because what I feel right now is not just a, 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 a something that's mechanical. It's not something that is just, you know, that I'm worked up about tonight. It is the power of the Holy Spirit and it comes from on high. That means it comes from the Father tonight. He said, I will pray the Father and He will send you the Holy Spirit. And when He comes, I want Him to sink into you. Lord have mercy. Does anybody get in that tonight? Say, Holy Spirit, sink inside of me tonight. Oh, let it let him sink inside of you tonight. Oh, why do you say that? Because your Bible says, no, you not, that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. He doesn't dwell in pews and carpet and chandeliers and, and video and audio equipment. He dwells in you tonight. Lord, how mercy. This will change your life tonight if you get. So it's, it, it means that word in dude, you need to really study that word because it means to sink into. It means to saturate. It means to put on. It means to clothe oneself. I'm telling you, the Bible is telling us tonight, you need to understand that what we need tonight is the Holy Spirit more than ever. And Jesus, the last thing he blessed us with was the Holy Spirit. 
The last thing, the last thing he gave us was the Holy Spirit. He did signs and wonders and miracles while he was on this earth. But when he left, he said, I'm going to give you the power of the Holy Spirit that you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Somebody help me now. You shall cast out demons in my name. Let me tell you, don't you play with no demon if you ain't got the Holy Ghost. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. Are y'all with me tonight? I mean, you better, you better make sure you got the power of the Holy Ghost in you. I know what I'm talking about because I ran up with one one night. And I, I'm telling you, God's power is greater than the power of the devil tonight. And greater is he that's within you than he that is in this world. I want you to get this tonight. Man, I feel this thing tonight. I, I, I'm already in revival mode. I'm already, I'm already feeling this thing down in my soul tonight. God wants you clothed with the Holy Spirit. So no weapon formed you against you shall prosper. That is what God said. I'm going to heaven, but when I go, I'm going to send you a power that you can live soberly and godly and righteously in this present evil world. I'm going to send you a power that when the devil comes against you, the power in you is greater than the powers around you. This will change your life tonight. So God wants us clothed with power. It means to sink into, to saturate, to put on, to clothe. When we are born again, the Spirit of God comes into us to a measure. But there is another work of the Holy Spirit, and it's called the baptism in the Holy Spirit. If I say baptism in the Holy Spirit. And that's what God wants to do. I am seeing God baptize folks in the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you right, that revival that just took place, uh, uh, that everybody was talking about here, here a while back at the college, you know, at Asbury College, a lot of great things happened there. And you know, it wasn't because they had a great big praise team. It wasn't because they had all of the mechanics that churches have now with lights and lasers, beams, and lights, flashes, smoke coming out of the stage. It was none of that. It was just a group of college kids with a guitar singing praises unto God and the Holy Ghost came where they were. He'll do the same thing right now. He'll do the same thing right here in this church. He'll do the same thing in you tonight. I'm telling you, when I was baptized the Holy Spirit, I was at my house and I lived, I lived at, get, get the name of this road I lived on, Poplar Point Road. I live way back in the woods. I mean, way back. I, uh, and, and the night, we, we were praying that night, Stan. And Stan had a similar experience to that over the revival here a while back. How many of you know, if you ever get it, you know it's real and nobody can talk you out of it? Can I get a witness now? Matter of fact, if you've ever, I, I got to behave myself. If you have ever slipped your knees up under the Lord's table, you'll never be satisfied with anything else. And if you, ever get a, if you ever get a good experience with the Holy Spirit, you'll never want anything else. And that happened to me when I was, uh, uh, my kids were little, they were, we were young then, and, and the Lord baptized me in the Holy, I didn't, I didn't even know how to pray. All I knew is, I, I, if, if I knew somebody told me there's more, and I said, if there's more, I want it. How many want all God's got for you tonight? If there's more, I want everything he's got for me tonight. Amen. And you don't have to worry about the, you, you don't have to worry about when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and, and baptizes you in the Spirit. You don't have to worry about that. You got to worry about them crazy folks out in the world. Amen. Amen. You don't have to worry, but, you, but this is a wonderful experience. And God is, is baptizing folks all around the world. So, so but there, there's an, the baptism, the word baptism means to be fully immersed in. How many want the Holy Ghost to fully immerse you? Fully immersed in. That's what I'm talking about tonight. That's what Jesus, that's what Jesus promised when he left. He said, I want my people not insufficient. I don't want them to think that they can't get the job done. I'm going to immerse them with my spirit. Lord, have mercy. I'm going to immerse them in my spirit. And I'm telling you right now. That is what God is doing. That is what God is doing around the world right now. I think it's time to turn the news off. Can somebody help me out now? As a matter of fact, I think it's even time to turn the, 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 some of the stuff we get on our phones off. Can I get a witness? And it's time to ask God to immerse us in the Holy Spirit. And that is what God is doing. God is wanting to do that. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about being clothed in the Spirit. And then I, I wrote this question. Down. I wrote this down. I thought this was really good. Turn your name and say, what kind of clothes are you wearing? Isn't that good? 
Somebody, what do you mean? I mean what kind of what are you wearing when you go out in the world? Are you wearing the garments that will not help you? Or are you going out in the world clothed with the Spirit? And that is what I really believe God is saying to me and saying to us tonight. I want you to ask yourself to clothe. See, the reason I ask you that because because clothing identifies people. A police officer wears a uniform, does he not? A, a, a fireman wears a uniform, does he not? A military man wears a, a, a military uniform. If he's in the Coast Guard, if he's in the Navy, if he's in the Army, you identify him by the clothing that he's got on. I really do believe with all of my heart, God wants this world to identify us by the clothing that we have on. And that, that clothing is that we are endued with the power of the Holy Spirit to go out into this world. And do all we can to win everybody that we can. So God wants us clothed with the Spirit. And, 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 and when we go out in this world, we don't have to go out in this world with fear. We can go out with faith. Don't go out not properly dressed, spiritually speaking. But when you leave your house, leave out full of the Spirit. Because you don't know what you're going to run into. Can I get a witness? How many of you run into some crazies? Can I get a witness? I tell you, I, I keep thinking that the older I get, I about run into all of them. Guess what? I have not. <laughs> I still run into folks, and I still need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit. To, he wants us to have identification. And our identification is not what, who I am and what I can do, but it's about what God's done for me and who he's put inside of me. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is what God is saying to us tonight. God is saying, I don't, listen, when Jesus comes back, he's not coming back for a weak, anemic church. He's not coming back for some people that's barely getting along and barely making it. He's coming back for men and women that's full of the Holy Ghost and power, endued, clothed. When he comes back, how, what, he's coming back for folks that have the proper clothes on. And your Bible says this, he shall appear the second time without sin and the salvation to them that love his appearing, for he's going to present himself a glorious church without spot nor wrinkle washed in the blood of the lamb sealed by the holy spirit that's what god is saying to the church tonight so what clothes do we need we need to be we need to be clothed with the spirit first thing if you're note taken write this down say put on jesus the Bible says when the holy spirit when i send you the holy spirit he said he will testify of me and you know what my job is? Is to testify about Jesus. It's our job to point people to Jesus. My, my job as a pastor is not to just point people to the church. If I can get them to Jesus is what I want to do. Amen? And if you get them to Jesus after a while, they're going to come to church. Can I get a witness? I heard some folks say, well, you know how to go to church to be a Christian. Well, you may not, but I sure like coming to church. Can I get a witness? I tell you one thing, I do a whole lot better when I come to church. So you got to have the right clothes. You got to put on Jesus. So if you have, if somebody would help me out a little bit tonight, if somebody would look up Galatians 3 and 27, Galatians 3 and 27, right quick, before I talk some more, I got three things to tell you, so we got to find it right quick. Here it is. Thank you, Mike. For as many as you have, have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. As many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. How many of you, when you go out in the world tomorrow, you want people to see that Christ lives in you through the power of the Holy Spirit? That is what God is saying. That the Lord is saying when we go out, we're to go out and be lights in the darkness. We're to go out and be witnesses to a world that's, that's dying and going to hell. We need to go out and let this world know that Christ is in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what God is saying to us. And I'm telling you, I'm excited about that tonight. I, I mean, I am beside myself. I want to go out and let the whole world know about Jesus. I, I, somebody said the other day, when you, when you get older, when are you going to slow up? I don't feel no slowing up. Matter of fact, I feel like I've hit another gear. I really do. 
I really do. I told Seth, Cynthia, Cynthia, we got a revival come down. Now it's been a it's been a while since I preached five services in a row. But but I remember preaching thirteen or fourteen in a row. But I was about twenty years younger then when I did that. Cynthia said, Well, well, you know you gotta preach a lot. I said, Yeah, I'm gonna need a whole lot of Jesus. Can I go with him? Amen. How many of you know we can't do nothing without the Holy Ghost tonight? Put on the Lord. Put on Jesus. Let the world see that you have Jesus inside of you through the power and the working of the Holy Spirit in your life. So, so when you go out and work, not only put on the Lord Jesus, but put on, put on this. Put on the armor of God. How about that one tonight? Ephesians 6. Y'all know it. You can quote it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. You may stand against the wiles of the devil. For wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities, power, spiritual weakness in high places. Therefore, you know what it says. But God has said, put on the whole armor of God. Take the shield of faith. Walk out in the power of the Holy Spirit. And your Bible says all this will be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know God wants to use you? Turn to your neighbor and say, God wants to use you. And I want you to tell him like you mean it. Say, he really does want to use you. He really does want to use you. Now tell him this. He wants to empower you. He wants to include, he wants to saturate you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Put on the whole armor. Put on Jesus. Put on the whole armor of God. Not only when you do that, but get this in your mind. The heavenly power. This power is for every born again believer. God is wanting to baptize. That means immerse us in the spirit. And God is doing that. So that, the next thing, uh, get swallowed up in God's clothing. Go out in the name of the Lord and receive the power of God. The same power that raised Christ from the dead, where does he reside at? In you. Think about that. Just, I know this is heavy for some folks, but I'm telling you what, the Lord's been dealing with me here lately. I, I'm telling you right now, I can't do nothing within myself, but I can do all things through Christ. And it's not by my power, nor by my might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And that is what God is saying to us tonight. And God is saying, I want you to go in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to get swallowed up or saturated or to put on or, or, or to be clothed with me when you go out in the world. And I want you to take the armor of God and I want you every fiery dart that comes against you, it'll be reflected, it'll be, it'll be knocked away from you. I'm telling you, God is speaking to the church, and the church is about to rise. I don't think, I don't think our best days are behind us. I still think our best days is before us. Do y'all think that besides anybody believe that? Besides, I, I've heard some, I've even heard some preachers say, some of our preachers say, well, we'll never see a rubber revival like we had before. Probably not, but we're going to see another revival. Can I get a witness? Because God don't do it the same way every time. And that rocks some people's world. I, everybody said, well, it, it, it ain't like I seen it. Don't you worry. It ain't going to be like you seen it. God's going to rock this world one more time before he comes back with the power of the Holy Spirit. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Glory to God. Are y'all with me? I knew what I got out to teach him, but we're preaching now. Just, 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 just hold on. God is saying this to us tonight. Go out, get swallowed up. There were people in the book of Acts that got swallowed up in the power of God. How about, how about this? Peter, how about this? When the men of God came out in Acts chapter 3, I believe it was, Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the man that, man that could not walk and never walked got up leaping and worshiping and praising God. You know how they did that? It won't because they had power. They were clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. It won't because they knew what to do. The Spirit knew what to do. It won't their power. It was the power of God. 
that, that, that they were clothed with, they were saturated in, they, they were full of, they'd just come out of the upper room, 120 of them, and they spilled out of that upper room like liquid love, and they went everywhere preaching the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, and signs and wonders followed them that believed. They were casting out devils, they were doing miracles all along the way, but it wasn't because of who they were or what they could do, it was because who lived inside of them and what he could do, and the same will happen today if we'll believe God Amen. the same will happen today and I believe we're going to see it how about let me give you another I, I just read a few of them today I got happy while I was reading them uh, Mike can you give me Acts chapter 5 verse 15 and 16 how many of you know that, that Peter has so much of the Holy Ghost in him that his shadows were doing things <laughs> how many know that you say I don't believe that I'm going to read it to you right now he was endued with power. He was clothed with power. They said of Peter and James and John and Matthew and Bartholomew, all of them, they said they're unlearned and ignorant men. But you know what? They finally had to say, they found out that these men had been with Jesus. Amen. Listen to this. Insomuch that they brought forth, that they were out preaching, teaching, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches. That is the least, that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. It wasn't Peter's shadow that healed people. It was the Spirit of God inside of Peter that healed people. Man, think about this. Overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about into Jerusalem. Bringing sick folk. Do y'all remember we used to bring the sick to church and pray for them? Uh, Rose, you remember when our preacher named Dole Marley? You remember Dole Marley? I heard him preach one night. His daddy was a preacher too. You might hear the story too. But I heard him preach one night. He said they had a young man in his church that, that was, had, was, had been sick. Uh, the child was about 8 or 10 years old. And that child his whole life had never looked at anything but his feet because his chin was glued to his chest and he was cross-eyed. He never raised his head up. And they had sent that child to every hospital in North Carolina hospital and, and, and sent him to Duke Hot everywhere, done everything. And I heard Dole Marley say, tell this one night, and he said he, he, they just did everything. And one night they decided, well, we've carried him everywhere and done everything. And he said, so we're going to carry him out to a Wednesday night prayer meeting and bring him down to the church and bring him up to the altar, and we're going to get him prayed for. I'm getting happy right now. Somebody tell, say this with me. I'm so glad. I'm so glad for prayer meeting. I love prayer meeting. I love Wednesday nights. So they decided to bring that boy down, and he brought him to the altar. And Dora Marley's daddy, they started praying. He went over there and anointed with oil, slapped his, just laid his hand gently on his forehand, prayed. All the saints were praying everywhere. This young boy had been to Duke, had been to Chapel Hill, had been everywhere you could think of. And they said he would look at his feet the rest of his life. But I want you to know when they got through praying and Dora Marley's daddy had walked around the pulpit two or three times and he decided to walk by the boy one time more, he had his eyes shut. And he walked by him one more time and when he opened his eyes, he was looking eyeball to eyeball with that little boy raised his head up and looked him right in the face. Amen. Amen. Give me the rest of that verse there, Mike. I won't through with it. I got to get some more out of that. And we, we, give, give, me, give me that verse. There you go. And there came a multitude of cities round about Jerusalem bringing sick folk and them which were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed every one. Now that's in your Bible. And I know what folks tell us. Well, that was back in the days of the book of Acts. Well, let me tell you, the church's Acts continued. Amen. Can I get a witness tonight? Amen. His Acts continued. Just a shout of, if, I, if I can just get him to, if I could just get men and women to start praying again, if I can just get somebody to believe in miracles again, if I can just get some spirit-filled people to gather around a little boy that, that, that needs a healing again, if I can just get a group together to pray, these things will happen. How about this one? Here's a good one. Paul had preached just about all night long. Some tells you he preached up to 12 or 1 o'clock. I, I'm going to read it to you. Turn to Acts chapter 20. 
Acts chapter 20. Everybody doing good tonight? Good, stay with me. Acts chapter 20, verse 8 through 12. Got it, Mike? And when we get through tonight, the guy in the sound room, by the, he don't say much. You ask him how he's doing. I say, why do you think, Mike? He says, I try not to. <laughs> Ain't it right, Mike? He don't talk a whole lot, but he does a good job out there keeping up with everything. <laughs> and I'm thankful for him. Anybody can stay up with me, they doing a good job tonight. <laughs> Listen, and there were many... Many lights up in the upper chamber where they were gathered. Now, Paul had been preaching. Some tell us that he had preached probably, he, it was around 12 or 1 o'clock, and Paul was preaching. You think I get long sometime. You ought to try that one one time. He preached about five or six hours. So he was preaching. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in the window a certain young man named Eutychus being fallen into a deep sleep and as Paul was long preaching, somebody said there's some long-winded preachers. And there goes one of them right there, Paul. Listen to what Paul. As Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft. In other words, a third-story building he fell out of. And was taken up dead. Tell your neighbor he was dead. Say he won't sleep. He was dead. And Paul went down, Lord have mercy, and Paul went down and fell on him. I read one translation today, Paul went down and laid on him, just got over top of him. And Paul went down and fell on him and embraced him and said, Trouble not yourself, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and he had broken bread and eaten and taken a long while, even to the break of day. So he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little comforted. The man fell out of a three-story building. He was dead as four o'clock in the morning. He was just as dead as dead could be. But Paul was full of the Holy Ghost. And he said, the man, I'm going to go down there. I'm going to just pray over him. And God will raise him from the dead. And he come right back and brought him into church. And they break bread and have fellowship. How many of you want to see that? I told Cynthia today, Lord, do what you did in the book of Acts. Do it in faith church. Do it in Roanoke. Rapids. Do it all over the Pentecostal Holiness Church. We got to quit trying to be something we're not and be what we are. We are Pentecostal believers that believe in Pentecostal power. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We've tried to be who we aren't. We've tried to say, we'll, live, we'll offend folks if we talk in tongues. We'll offend folks. They won't come back if we talk in tongues. Let me tell you something right now. The real fire of God always burn out the false fire of God. And let me tell you this, too. Listen, if you feel the power of God on you, I'm going to help you out real good. Don't you ever fake it, but don't you ever fight it. Amen. Can I get a witness tonight? And let God use you. It's not us. It's His Spirit. T turn your name and say you got one more thing. I think... I believe, I wrote this down today just as fast as I could write it, so I can't hardly read it. <coughs> I can't even read it when I'm good. But here's what I wrote, the last thing. I believe before our Lord returns, we're going to see a greater move of God through the power of the Holy Spirit than I ever saw when I first got into Pentecostal church. I do believe there's going to be a group in the group that's going to want to see God move again. I do believe that. I do believe that we have found out that we can do nothing without Him, but we can do everything that He says we can do with Him. And then I wrote this. This is real good because it applies to me. Ordinary Christians clothed in the power of God will do extraordinary exploits. I thought that was good. Let me read it again. I wrote this to ordinary Christians clothed in the power of God are going to do extraordinary exploits through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then I wrote these four things down. We're going to minister in the highways 
in the byways. We are waiting for folks to come to church. The Bible never said wait for them to come to church. You got one marching order. Somebody say it. One word. Say one, I want you, I want you to tell me what the one word. The one marching order we got from Jesus was one word. Go. And when you go, go clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And don't go until you be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why I said go to Jerusalem and tarry until you be endued. And then when you endue with power, then go in the highways and in the byways. And then he said this. Then I believe this is what I said here. I believe we're going to start seeing people being touched in the grocery store. Rose worked the food line. She was passing out scripture all the time. I mean, I mean, I mean, she, you, you go to, I mean, she didn't just pass out scripture. If you didn't watch it, she prayed for you right in, right in. If you prayed for anybody in food line. Okay. Amen. Ain't that good? Somebody say Hallelujah. How many want that kind of boldness you'll pray for them in food line? You know, how many want so much of Pentecostal boldness that you'll pray for them in Walmart? Matter of fact, how many of you want the power of God in you that your Father will receive all the glory and all the honor and all the praise for everything ever said and done? I got one more thing. I, did, I didn't told y'all one more thing, but it is one more thing. Here it is. Here it is. Let me read it. This heavenly power is always, always to glorify our heavenly Father. This heavenly power he's given to the church, to every to Christians, was given to glorify the Father. When the Holy Spirit came, he said he will testify me and glorify me. And that is what God is wanting to do in the church. I really believe. I, I, I believe Sunday morning. I believe this coming Sunday morning in this church, we're going to see people touched and healed and blessed like we've never seen before. I mean it. I really mean we're going to see more people saved than we've ever seen. Saved. I, I, I've got a sense of urgency on me. I, 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 listen, I, I mean, I, I've been passing now for 40 years. Now, unless I outlive a lot of folks, I ain't going to get another 40. Can I get a witness? Amen. So with whatever I got left, I'm going to give it everything. Stand with me tonight. Glory to God.